Uh, first paper is Amacine et al. Effects of leucine enriched whey protein supplementation on physical function in post hospitalized older adults participating in 12 weeks of resistance training program, a randomized controlled trial. Uh, they could have used an editor on this. Um, so the authors note the utility of resistance training in older adults to prevent sarcopenia, uh, but the additional effects of a protein supplement, they say, are not so clear. Actually, I would avert that it's perfectly clear to many of us. Um, in any case, they wanted to study the effect of protein supplementation on a resistance training program in post-hospitalized older patients. So bear that in mind. This is, it says so right on the, right on the title, this is post-hospitalized patients, patients who are just getting out of the hospital, a population that is definitely at risk uh, for loss of lean body mass and sarcopenia. So what did they do? They took 28 subjects uh, in a 12-week resistance training program, randomized to either a placebo or a leucine-enriched protein supplement, 20 whole big grams of protein. Whoa, daddy. Um, given within the first half hour after training, that's good. They looked at physical function, upper and lower body strength, aerobic capacity, and a standard physical performance battery, and MNA, or mini nutritional assessment, uh, for which I think you can substitute the phrase misleading nutritional assessment for reasons that uh, we go into in detail in journal club number one, um, and body composition they looked at. Everybody had improvement in physical function, regardless of the group. Control group, placebo, placebo group, experimental group with the wave supplement, they all had improvements in physical function, uh, but the authors report no further effects for the protein group, and they also report that muscle mass did not improve after resistance training in either group. So, you know, they were doing it wrong, <laughs> basically. Um, so... Uh, that was, that's the gist of the study. Um, and uh, people are going to talk about this. Uh, you can see this paper being cited like, yeah, these people, they, they took a protein supplement and it didn't help. It didn't do anything. Um, that's the people who look at the title and look at the abstract. But if you actually look at the study itself, it's hard to take it too seriously. Um, it's a sloppy study from the get go. It's supposed to be about post-hospitalized patients. Now, bear that in mind. It's this, they're studying a particular population, post-hospitalized patients. That's what's in the title. Um, that's what's in the abstract. That's what's in the purpose and background. So the authors at least did a power analysis and found that they would need a sample size of 35 in each group to be able to detect a two kilogram change in muscle mass during the study. But after their recruitment process for post-hospitalized patients, there weren't 35 in each group. So what did they do? They started recruiting patients from the clinic, right? Not post-hospitalized patients. And even after they did that, they never got to the 35 in each group. The entire study is 28 people. So by their own power analysis, the study was not sufficiently powered to conclude that there was no difference between the groups in spite of the fact that they did conclude that there was no difference between the groups. Um, so there's every reason to suspect uh, that their conclusion is a beta error, an error of the second type. Uh, of all the patients they tried to recruit, of all the patients that they screened for recruitment in the study, 94% either refused or were excluded. Um, so that raises fundamental questions about the population. Um, basically, they, they studied the weirdos. You know. <laughs> um, if you end up with no change in muscle mass after 12 weeks of resistance training, um, even in a frail population, uh, especially in a frail population, you're doing it wrong. You, know, you, you don't know what you're doing in the gym as a coach. And that result alone uh, calls the whole thing into question to the extent that we can even trust that result, which we can't because the authors themselves demonstrate that the study is grossly underpowered. And finally, and this is cool, we have no idea what the baseline nutrition of these subjects was. Uh, we don't even know their gross energy intake, let alone their protein or amino acid intake at baseline. Um, in a, but we do know 
uh, from the literature and from the statistics that in a population of post-hospitalized patients with an average age of 81, the statistics in the literature say that their baseline protein intake was almost certainly inadequate. Um, and adding a 20 gram protein shake twice a week after working out for a total of a whopping extra 40 grams of protein a week uh, on top of an already inadequate nitrogen balance is like you know, taking a tinkle in the deep blue sea. Um, and the authors admit as much in the discussion, um, but they also suggest that they must be right because they, you know, some cherry pick studies agree with them and they fail to cite contrary data. Most of the studies that do agree with them, of course, probably suffer from similar method methodologic issues. For me, like the real issue is they didn't get an increase in muscle mass in either group, right? So there's nothing to work with here. So it's kind of like if you were going to say, I don't know, um, we wanted to see what the effect was of high frequency noise on mating habits of meerkats, right? <laughs> Well, first you have to demonstrate that you can like observe from some meerkats and, and watch them mate, right? If you can't even do that, and then you say, well, the music didn't make any difference. Well, how do you know, right? So this is, this is really kind of really awful. The only take home I think uh, that we can take from this is just how suspicious we should be of this literature and how just looking at the abstract or the title or a summary in the media is gonna lead us astray. Uh, paper doesn't comport with our clinical experience uh, or our practice and its methods and conclusions are so weak that, you know, there's nothing practice changing here. This is not solid data. Um, CJ. There were, as I looked at the paper, like there, you know, I try, I try not to always go, Oh, you know, this is wrong. Let's pull the moon door out from these guys. Cause they, they failed to meet a power analysis or something uh, to, to borrow a Forrest Gump phrase shit happens. But what I would have, ex what I would have expected to see was a, so with the resulting subjects that we had, what are we powered to find? And with so few, you know, with so few who actually finished, like you would have needed a substantial, a huge change in actual muscle mass to, 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 detect a difference, which would have been implausible in three months anyway. Right. If you're not powered to detect a plausible increase of muscle mass, regardless of the effectiveness of your resistance training program in three months, you don't have a study. You have a data collection program, like, you know, program. The, the part that, part that really kind of, this, this is one of those, or I, I look at a study and I'm like, how do, would I conduct this if I were actually doing the research? They mentioned, so uh, the program consists of one hour, but they use for familiarization one RM estimation by Brzezicki equation, because those are valid. But uh, then they list the exercises that they tested. So side hip raise, standing hip extension, standing knee flexion. Uh, how do you get a one RM for standing knee flexion? how do you get increased muscle mass from training standing knee flexion or hip raise, right? It's not going to happen in 12 weeks. If, like if, I, if I were looking at this kind of program, perhaps maybe they didn't get something from this study, but they should have at least, I would think, pulled from another study with uh, this was their resistance training program and it worked in geezers and got them these results. I, I don't know where this program comes from and I wouldn't expect it to work. Right. So, so in other words, what they were trying to do was they were trying to say, um, will this intervention improve a positive result? But then they weren't able to show us a baseline prop positive result upon which to improve, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, they weren't able to demonstrate that they actually had an experimental handle on the model, on the system that they were trying to study. So, you know, so it's not controlled yeah, for a not, randomized controlled right. trial. Yeah. So I think it. I think it's pretty awful, and um, it's on. You know, unfortunately, I can see colleagues looking at the study and saying, "Well, you know, uh, no need to increase your protein. No need to take a protein shake. No need to. You know, no need to worry about this." And you know, that's too bad. <laughs>